Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric Marks. Uh, I am uh, the lead engineer of uh, MetaMask Snaps. Uh, this workshop is called uh, Getting Started with MetaMask Snaps. I realize we have some Wi-Fi uh, issues since 2018. Uh, Snaps was first uh, announced as a concept uh, three years ago at DevCon in Osaka. Uh, so I know we have we have some returning guests uh, with us today in the room, and uh, you know since then lots of things happened. COVID happened, 2020 happened, but since uh, 2021 uh, we've been working on Snaps full time uh, at MetaMask, and since the beginning of this year uh, we have been in a developer release via our Canary version of the MetaMask extension uh, called MetaMask Flask. Uh, and um, uh, this workshop is basically like the sort of Snaps 101, how do you get started like developing a Snap uh, using one of the newer APIs that we developed. Um, if you read the instructions, there's a custom build of MetaMask to download because we haven't shipped this uh, API in production yet. It's coming in the next few weeks. Um, but uh, before continuing, uh, we need to talk a little bit about what is MetaMask Snaps. Uh, and we're gonna and we're gonna start uh, from the very ground level uh, and build up from there. Uh, and so MetaMask, uh, as uh, all of you probably know, uh, is a non-custodial cryptocurrency wallet for Ethereum. Uh, you enter your secret recovery phrase into MetaMask. You can derive your uh, your keys and your externally owned accounts, and uh, it will manage those keys for you, encrypt them with a password. Uh, MetaMask allows you to interact with Ethereum via an RPC uh, endpoint. Uh, by default, we use our friends at Infura, but you can add uh, whichever ones that you want. Uh, and that allows you to do stuff like, uh, you know, send transactions from account one to account two. Uh, the really powerful thing about MetaMask is that it enables you to interact with Ethereum dApps. And so that is through our uh, window.ethereum uh, uh, provider object that we inject uh, into the web page. And that is what all dApps use in order to submit JSON RPC requests that are either handled directly by MetaMask or smart contract accounts. Um, uh, what about uh, you know zero knowledge applications and non-Ethereum cryptography, so like things that use curves other than SecP256K1. Uh, and that's just like uh, a, a sample of the things uh, that's being built in Ethereum uh, that we uh, don't support out of the box. And that you know doesn't even get into Cosmos, Polkadot, Avalanche, Solana, whatever, um, in, a, uh, in addition to, uh, to those things. And so uh, it is, uh, uh, we believe, basically impossible. Uh, and I think, you know, practically, uh, like empiric, like I observed this, I don't predict it. It is impossible for any single organization to, uh, add support to develop the domain expertise to understand all of these different protocols and primitives, and then also to develop the code and maintain the you know unimaginably large code base that it would take to actually create user experience for all of the things that are being built in Web3. And MetaMask Snaps is our uh, answer to this problem. And Snaps are simply sandbox programs uh, that are run by MetaMask. And their purpose is to create new user experiences in the wallet. And that is to say, uh, the purpose is for them to modify the wallet in some useful way. And uh, the user adds snaps to the wallet at runtime. And they have access to uh, special permissions that are not available to dApps, uh, including things like key management. And that makes them uniquely powerful building blocks uh, for Web3 developers. And uh, so using this simple model, just in the past week, uh, over the course of uh, ETH Bogota and some uh, and a hacker house that uh, we co-sponsored uh, with uh, BitDAO and Game7, hackers have developed uh, a CK nullifier snap, a transaction security snap, an account, uh, account activity notifications, uh, and a smart contract account wallet uh, or a smart contract account support, uh, all in MetaMask, all using snaps. And, uh, and Snaps currently in developer releases include uh, Starknet, Filecoin, uh, Bitcoin, Arweave, uh, and many more. And so, uh, and here I'll just briefly stop to say that like, uh, we're all, uh, like, this isn't a developer release. So the reason we keep it in the channel is because we don't, it's not quite ready to be pushed for, uh, to be pushed to, uh, you know, the tens of millions of people that use MetaMask on a daily basis. Uh, but uh, that is our goal in the upcoming year, and we'll get to that uh, in a bit. Uh, and so uh, 
we and so we believe that this illustrates that snaps is the gateway to all of web3 by turning the wallet itself into an application platform only then can we invite the entire community in in order to bring their domain expertise and their passion for uh, the specific features and functionality that they're interested in in order to add that functionality to the wallet and make it available to uh, all of their users and uh with that uh we're going to get started uh, so, uh, so again, uh, there's the HackMD link uh, for those of you who are able to uh, access that. And we're going to start here. And we're actually going to... I was, I was too busy trying to get my Wi-Fi to work uh, to clear out all of this stuff. But we'll get started here in a second. And so... Uh, so as I mentioned, the first thing that we need to do uh, is add a custom build of uh, MetaMask Flask uh, to the browser. And uh, my visibility, is, is the size of like the editor and the text and everything good so far? Okay, yeah, please, please holler at me if not. And um, uh, the way you add a custom build uh, to Chrome uh, is you simply... Uh, get your build from wherever uh, from wherever that lives, and you just drag and drop it in. Uh, your browser needs to be in developer mode uh, in order for uh, that to work. Uh, so, and be advised that developer mode like exposes your extensions to certain kinds of, of malware. Uh, so, you know, don't put your uh, don't put main in developer mode. And we're just going to go through onboarding here super quickly. I'm going to go ahead and snag my throwaway uh, seed phrase for that. And Wi-Fi permitting, we should be good to go. Okay, yes. All right, uh, so now I've set up a version of Flask, and so the only thing uh, you'll notice that's like immediately different with Flask is that the onboarding is slightly different, and we have a purple fox to distinguish it from the uh, regular uh, orange fox. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is, I've already done this, but uh, the next step is to uh, create a new GitHub repository uh, using the uh, template snap monorepo. Uh, so this uh, monorepo is a, is a template uh, that contains two things, a, uh, a two, or a two sub-repositories or packages, a website, and uh, the actual snap itself. Uh, and things are, yeah, they're kind of loading. Um, but um, once you've pulled that down uh, and run yarn install, uh, we can see here, uh, that should still be good. Uh, that we have in our packages. Um, uh, we have the website and the snap. And I'm just going to make sure that we've installed and everything with that is good. And then we're going to uh, kick things off by running yarn start, uh, which should hopefully not need too much network access. Great. And so this is the uh, template snap uh, interface and so you see we have it ho we have everything hosted on localhost and the first thing we need to do is uh, connect to our snap and so first uh, when you install a snap you get a permission request uh, from the website that that made the request and it's basically saying hey I the website at this uh, URL wants to talk to uh, this particular snap and during local development, snaps are just identified by the local host URL where they're hosted, uh, just out of uh, convenience. And once we've accepted that permission request, then MetaMask will go and fetch the snap source code and its manifest, uh, and then ask for its permissions. And so here we see that this snap, again identified by its local host URL, uh, wants to display confirmations inside of MetaMask. And we're going to say OK to that. And to try out this functionality, whoops, excellent. Uh, wait, ooh, ooh, yeah. that's it, that's it, folks. A snap, a snap, everyone. Get a look, get a look. It's showing a confirmation. Oh, goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, it's real. Yeah, yeah. So, so what happened here 
uh, is I was going to do a little, I was going to mess around with this notification a little bit, but, uh, or confirmation rather, uh, but we're not going to do that. So this is just a, a dummy notification for display purposes, and we're going to skip right to the source code and look at like what is going on and what is the anatomy of these things. And we're going to reject that, and that's totally fine. Uh, and so if we go in back here, uh, and if we look at, uh, let's see, we have packages snap, we have, you see, we have like in the snap package, uh, there's like some regular like NPM stuff going, JavaScript stuff going on. Uh, but you also see that we have a snap config and a snap manifest and then a source file. And then the source file is just index.ts. Uh, and so looking at the manifest here, uh, you're going to see that there's a version, uh, which you may have noticed matched what we saw in the application. And uh, then we have some information about the source, so a SHA sum uh, of the bundle, uh, and uh, some other like metadata if we were to publish uh, the SNAP to NPM, uh, which is our currently supported uh, like distribution mechanism. Uh, we have plans for others. And then finally, you have the permissions here, uh, and SNAP confirm is the actual RPC method uh, that gets called uh, by the SNAP in order to display a confirmation inside of MetaMask. And if we actually look at the snap source code, uh, you see here that it exports a this uh, on RPC request uh, handler function. Uh, and uh, basically the way that looks the way that looks from inside of the website, so this is a file from inside of the website, uh, you will call this it's an RPC method inside of an RPC method. Uh, so you have uh, wallet invoke snap, and then you pass it the ID of the snap and then the request uh, that you want to pass to it. Uh, and you see that the method is hello. If we go back to the snap, that is the only uh, method that we support. And that just causes this uh, confirmation to be displayed. Uh, now, if things uh, like continue working a little bit better than they were doing some minutes ago, uh, we're going to take this uh, snap and turn it into a transaction inside snap. Uh, and if we... Uh, briefly return here. So uh, we've basically, we've demonstrated like we've gotten a snap running and now it's time to like replace its uh, confirmation permission uh, with this uh, transaction insight permission. And all that uh, this permission does is it tells MetaMask uh, that like, oh, this snap wants to uh, provide uh, transaction insights. Uh, and in order to uh, uh, do so, uh, we're just going to nuke the contents of this file. And then we're going to go ahead and import some other stuff, namely on transaction handler. We are going to uh, add uh, a package called uh, utils. And we're going to import some stuff from that. And then we have this handler that we need to specify uh, on transaction. Uh, and that is going to be a function that looks something like this. And right now it's a sad function uh, because it's not returning uh, what it needs to return uh, to satisfy its type. And we're just going to return some like dummy uh, a dummy trend, a, 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 um, a dummy insight for now. Oh, and I think we also need it to be async. Yes. Okay. And we're also just going to add a little bit of validation to make sure that the transaction is of a type that we can understand because like, you know, we're writing a specific insight snap that, that uses our particular domain knowledge. And so uh, we need the transaction to look uh, a particular way. Uh, so if it's not an object or if it doesn't have uh, the property data or if uh, the data is not a string, then we're going to say, oh, actually, we're going to do this first. Oh, wait, no. D 
do just gonna call it an unknown transaction for now. And then we're gonna say we're gonna import this. We're gonna import this. A little warning for sanity in case I make any typos here. Perfect. And then we're just going to do this down here. And we're going to hide that. And then we need to make some modifications uh, on the front end as well. Uh, and on the front end, uh, so the front end is just a uh, React uh, application uh, written in TypeScript. Uh, nothing fancy going on there, uh, although it certainly looks fancy. Um, and I'm going to snag a little snippet here with some useful constants uh, that we are going to use because right now, uh, our problem is that, uh, let's see, where do we have send hello? Uh, when we click on the um, on this button here, uh, it is going to uh, call this handler, which is going to call send hello, which uh, calls this hello method. And we don't even have an RPC handler anymore, so that's not going to work. So we need to delete that, delete this, and then uh, rather... Then doing that, we're first going to grab some accounts because we need access to the user's accounts in order to send a transaction. You need an await. I do need an await. Thank you, sir. And then if there's no if there's no account. We're just going to throw an error saying failed to get accounts. Actually, that should even request if it rejects, but you know, never hurts to be defensive. Uh, and then once we have done that, we are going to, then we have an account and then we're going to just send a transaction. Uh, and we're going to do again, method ETH. Send transaction. And we're going to have some params that should be recognizable to many of the fine folks in this room. So we have a from address. The to address uh, is going to be uh, the address of a contract that is, in fact, deployed to mainnet, but uh, that will reject any transaction that we accidentally send to it. I just happen to know this to be the case. Uh, we are not sending it anything in terms of value. And then the data that we're going to send it to start with is just going to be some dummy uh, like 0x1. And that is basically, oh, right. And now we're going to have, now I'm going to have a little fight with prettier. For some reason, the ESLint Prettier plugin does not work as advertised. We're not going to let that stop us. Ha ha. Excellent. Okay. Now, now I'm going to try to reconnect, and it's not going to fail to install. And so we can see that like the permissions that we're requesting have changed. Uh, because we're now fetching and displaying transaction insights. That's the purpose of the snap now. And we're going to improve and install. And I'm going to anxiously look at the background console. I think it worked. Yes, it did. Uh, so now it's asking for accounts. Uh, that should be familiar. And here, where MetaMask is trying to uh, estimate some stuff. And look, foobar. Okay, we're using the API correctly. We're slowly inching towards our goal. Uh, <laughs> you're you're too kind. You're too kind. Um, all right. And so we rejected that, and there's an error here. That's totally fine. That's expected. We love our expected errors. 
Um, okay. Uh, so the next thing, so the front end now for like this uh, demonstration is basically uh, is basically done, uh, and we're gonna go back and look at our um, uh, snap because the next thing is okay. So we managed to like interact with the API. We've demonstrated that we can do transaction insights, but now let's actually go get some like useful information uh, and see if we can um, like decode uh, more of this transaction than we're currently doing. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, we're going to add a second uh, permission because we are going to call uh, the four byte registry API uh, and snaps do not get uh, network access by default. Uh, so they uh, cannot just like call out to the network unless they are granted uh, the permission to do so explicitly. Uh, and that permission is simply called uh, endowment uh, network access. And uh, we are going to call, uh, as I said, the four byte API. And we have some, and we have some uh, useful snippets here uh, in order to do that. And so here, the, this API endpoint, that's simply just like the, um, uh, the four byte uh, API endpoint that we're gonna call. Uh, it has a single query parameter, which is the hexadecimal like four byte signature uh, of the uh, uh, of the contract call uh, call data, and then uh, we have just a useful type uh, that we will use when we parse the results once once we get them. Uh, this network permitting, uh, and so uh, actually before I forget to do this, I'm going to swap out this dummy value into something real. Uh, let's see, transaction constants dot update withdrawal account. So these are just some, these are just like some encoded contract calls um, that uh, we, to save time, we encoded before this workshop. And so next we want to uh, fetch data from four bytes. And that is going to start with a fetch call. Uh, await, fetch. Oh, wait, are we done? No, we're not done because we need to uh, parse the transaction data first. And we are going to do, uh, let's see, function signature uh, is going to be equal to, all right, first we're going to do transaction data actually equals remove. 0x, so we're going to, it's 0x prefixed, and we're going to strip that. Excellent. And then the function signature is going to be uh, the first uh, eight bytes of the transaction data, or sorry, the first four bytes, uh, which will, uh, let's see, transaction data dot slice. There we go. Uh, and now we have the function uh, signature as well. And in order to uh, fetch uh, from four byte, we need to do the API endpoint followed by the uh, function signature with a, a zero X prefix. And then we have some parameters to give this, which is going to be uh, get. And we have just some basic headers. I would already knew what I was going to do. Boom. Sweet. And then uh, if we fail to do that, we are going to throw uh, and we're going to say, eh. failed to fetch from four byte registry. But otherwise, uh, we should be uh, good to start working with this data. And uh, the result is going to look something like this where we get the JSON 
Uh, oops. And that's going to be a four byte signature, an array of four byte signature results. And uh, then once we have that result, so the thing, there's one thing we have to deal with, uh, we're gonna extract the actual text signature of the, uh, of the function call. Uh, and uh, because four bytes is not a very big space, there are a lot of collisions, so it might return multiple results. Anyone who's dealt with this with four byte in practice uh, is probably familiar with this problem. And we're just going to pick the oldest one uh, because we need to pick something. And so we're gonna see function text signature is going to be uh let's see result uh and then we're going to sort created at locale compare e dot created at and then we're just gonna map that to value dot text signature. And so, and if there is no function text signature, then uh, there is no signature for this. Uh, and so we're gonna say um, no function signature or uh, no function, no results in registry for function signature. And then we're gonna do an early return. But in the happy case, uh, we are going to have our insights dot type. And we are going to give that uh, a try next. And we're actually gonna lint as well, just to ensure we have no problems with that. Okay, so going back, uh, we're gonna need to reconnect because we modified the snap. Uh, the live reload, unfortunately, doesn't go all the way into the extension. Uh, someday we're gonna be able to do that. Uh, but now we see that the permissions are different. We have access to the internet uh, as one of the uh, permissions now. And we're gonna go ahead and approve and install. So far, so good. And then let's see what happens now. Ooh. Mm. This this may be a lot to ask uh, of the of the network at the moment. Yeah. The console does get very, the console there is, we probably have a bug where there is too much looping happening in the background. Uh, but we, if we were actually, if I reject this, I might get a useful, aha, okay, yeah, so I messed it up. Uh, and let's see what I messed up. Yeah, no, the thing that was result is the thing that was undefined. Uh, and that hasn't happened before. Uh, I shouldn't, no. All right, I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. Ah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, eagle-eyed stranger. Um, yeah, if I were, um, if I, if I had, if I had done my types better, this wouldn't have been a problem. Let that be a lesson to everyone. Uh, okay. 
Now we're going to try that again. Hey, there it is. There it is. The function signature. The function signature. Uh, and uh, for, for our final trick, we're going to get a little bit fancier. We're also going to decode the actual parameters that are encoded in the call data as well, just because we can. Um, and in order to do that, uh, we are going to add a, another package called uh, ABI utils uh, to our snap. Ooh, <laughs> spooky workshop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll let someone, someone will no doubt figure out the right level. Uh, and we have another snippet. Uh, <laughs> hey, if we increase the frequency there a little bit, like we can really create magic in here. Uh, and so this, uh, <laughs> And so uh, this uh, this ABI utils package has an encode and a decode function, which allows you to uh, decode and encode uh, call data. Uh, and it has uh, it returns values that are not JSON serializable, uh, and that doesn't work because the transaction insights need to be JSON serializable. So this is just a function that handles that, uh, and we're not going to worry about what it does in detail. Uh, decode parameters. And so we are going to import encode from MetaMask API utils, stupendous. And for this one, we need to, now we need to do some slicing. Uh, because first we need to extract the actual parameter types uh, from the function text signature, and we're going to do that by some good old-fashioned uh, uh, string parsing. And so we are going to do function text signature, and it's going to be a slice, and it's going to be an index of the first parenthesis plus one. Uh, my ID is leaking that I've already done this earlier today. And then we are going to split, uh, right, because if you, uh, you'll recall that this looks something like a function name, uh, type one comma type two dot dot dot. So we're just going to extract this substring, split on the commas, and then we're going to have the parameter types. Uh, and the reason we need that is because that is an input to the um, uh, decode function. Uh, so then we are going to decode uh, the, let's see, parameter types. Let's see, const decoded equals, and let's see, the next thing I want is, Yes, now I want the transaction data without uh, the function signature. And why wouldn't that work? No. No. Great. Okay. Uh, and so that's going to give us the decoded stuff. And the we're going to decode the parameter types out of the transaction uh, call data. And just to make sure, I'm going to cheat again really quickly. Uh, normally, I would have my notes off to the side uh, so you wouldn't know that I'm cheating. Uh, but but life is not fair sometimes. And then we're going to set insights.params to decoded. We're going to map that with our value normalizer. 
And then we should be, now we should be in good shape. Ooh. Oh, I don't want encode, I just want decode. All right. Now we're going to reconnect again so that MetaMask loads our changes. We're going to send a message. We're going to open this up. Hey, parameters, uh, address and Boolean, just as we would expect from the function type. And so now, and so this is, so obviously like we're not going super deep and like just seeing the parameters here is not super useful, but the, but the point that, that uh, we're illustrating here is that like, you know, this snap is pretty much, uh, aside from hitting four byte, like it's, it's self-contained, it uses like very basic like utilities in order to like tell useful information. And obviously we could dig deeper uh, into the call data if like, uh, like if we wanted to, uh, or like fetch, you know, the uh, compiled contract code and try to like t say something about that. And so I mentioned one of the uh, one of the snaps that got built at the hackathon recently, and we've had a couple of these built so far uh, by the community, which is just like snaps that do, uh, they know something about contract security or have like a list of accounts that or addresses that are unsafe uh, and will uh, display some information to the user when they're like, hey, like this isn't going to work. And you could just as easily uh, imagine like you could even run ganache inside uh, of a snap in order to simulate the transaction uh, or like uh, hit a tenderly endpoint or whatever like service that you uh, imagine in order to add like useful data that you know about uh, and that MetaMask uh, does not know about uh, for any given contract interaction. Uh, and uh, that is a wrap for the workshop and uh, I am happy to take uh, questions for the uh, remaining time that we have. Cool. And uh, you were you were fast. First? Oh, cool. So I really like it, and I can definitely see a lot of use cases where I would use it. My only concern is that I often have to support other wallets. So, for instance, if Coinbase wallet, which to be honest, I don't like as much because it's not open source. Um, so, would it be possible? Or do you see other wallets implementing anything like this? Or do you see any support from like other tooling? You know, the community uses like ethers or walk mm -hmm. to support this or maybe in a way that if i'm in metamask i have a snap but in other places it's not broken right right and so the uh, so we are trying to create uh, specifications uh, for like the manifest and the apis that we ship uh, and so on uh, we have a lot of work that i won't have time in progress that i won't have time to talk about um uh, but like uh, using uh, something like wallet connect v2 to like um you know, just like the, the DAP will just ask for the network that it wants and then MetaMask will go and find the snap that supports it and add it uh, as part of like the connection flow. Uh, so you don't have to like call a specific snap in order to interact with it. And so we're trying to create specifications for those things. Uh, and I can't talk uh, like really about concrete plans at this point, but uh, personally, like my, I would love to see snaps become like uh, an open standard and like for there to be like an open source, like wallet kernel uh, uh, or something that like others can build on uh, in the future. Yeah, Thank you. sure. And I think I saw you next. Are those snaps? Website specific, like, can I just deploy it Yes, yes, correct. How does that work? Is there a... uh, so, uh, there is, so there is no marketplace as yet. If anyone wants to build a marketplace, we would love to see that being built because we don't want to be, we don't want to have an app store. We want it to be like a full and open, open permissionless ecosystem. Uh, and so uh, when, uh, right now, uh, the way it works is like when a snap is published to NPM, uh, like if you have MetaMask Flask, you can install and run that snap uh, and any website that like knows how to talk to it uh, can just can talk to it. Uh, and so and once we get to stable, 
they're like they're you know we're gonna we're gonna have like a essentially like a block list uh, if like there are known malicious snaps and things of that nature but really in order for this to scale there is going to need to be like a yelp for snaps essentially uh in order for people to do, like be able to establish trust uh, in them uh because uh, we do not want to be in the business of uh, running an app store because it's antithetical to the values of web3 and also it sucks as a job um uh does that answer your question you. splendid uh, and I, I think you were next also my new concern i think is a very issue but uh, how do you think it's going to become the best company yes yes so uh so that's like uh so recently if you uh, follow uh, like news about app stores and stuff uh, there was an instance where, uh, like there are essentially two philosophy, philosophies that you can use to approach it. Like the, the sort of walled garden app store approach that exists right now and what we want to do, which is a permissionless web of trust model. And, and so in the app store model, it basically relies on like executive oversight and like review of the tenders of the walled garden, like for scams to not be presented. But like just the other uh, week, I think Facebook reported to Google a list of like hundreds of malicious Android apps whose only purpose was to steal Facebook credentials. Uh, and so even like with executive and oversight, like it's, it's impossible to, uh, to fully prevent scams. And I think the best way that even in an app store model that you actually establish trust in something is you look, who recommends this? How many reviews does it have? How many, how long has it existed? And so, uh, we, uh, so that's like why we uh, want and need a marketplace to exist in order for it to scale to users without them getting scammed. And until we get to that point, uh, our first release is probably going to have like a finite set of snaps that like at least, uh, you know, we can, uh, uh, we're confident, you know, our, uh, you know, were implemented rigorously. If they're managing keys, they, uh, they were uh, perhaps audited. And like, we know they're not like outright trying to steal your stuff. Uh, but like, but preventing scams in a like permissionless application ecosystem is not a fully solvable problem. Uh, but we think by building, but I, but, but by investing in the community and in like uh, a marketplace, uh, we can get there. Uh, the next question. Is Snap supported in MetaMask Mobile? Uh, so uh, mobile, uh, so we've uh, mobile is a TBD. It's it's going. We're uh, we're working on it. At no timelines to announce as of yet. No, they, so, so they are, uh, like the execution environment is the same. The goal is for a snap to be unable to tell if it's executing in the browser, uh, in the server, on a mobile device, uh, on an abacus, uh, like shouldn't matter. Uh, that's the, that's the guarantee. Yes. What's the timeline for snaps? Yeah. Uh, so, so they are publicly released right now in a developer channel. So like you can uh, download MetaMask Flask and just like get started with the ones uh, that exist. Uh, in terms of release to stable, we are targeting early next year. Uh, yes. Uh, that is, that is a, a, a great question, kind stranger. Uh, uh, and so uh, we have like in the, uh, in the hack MD, um, there are some links at the top that lead you probably. Yeah, no, yeah, it's locked, whatever. No, it's on the HackMD, which is on the slides, which are accessible through the schedule, like on, on DevCon. But uh, the MetaMask has a repository called Snaps Monorepo. That's snaps-monorepo. Uh, and the discussions in there are a great place to get started. Uh, we also have a, a landing page on our website uh, called um, metamask.io slash snaps. Uh, that will also get you to a lot of the resources. Uh, but the GitHub discussions is a great place to get started. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, uh, we uh, we are in touch with Google and are working with them to ensure that uh, the, the, everybody is happy, <laughs> and we and we don't get banned from the Chrome Store. Um, how how much? 
All right, I, I'm being asked to stop, so I'm going to stop. But thank you, every, thank you everyone so much for attending.